Good evening, gorgeous flower pots. It's Wednesday night. I'm your Auntie Nelly, and it's time for night time with Nelly. How are we this evening? Are we well? Where are you watching me from? Give me a like, give me a love, give me a share. Good evening, it's Wednesday, and we're all together, and it's time for night time with Nelly. How are we? Please, please, please be informed that the advice given on this show is for entertainment purposes only. Okay, it's over 18s. There is talk of a sexual nature and probably strong language throughout. So if that's not your bag, off your fuck now. If we've got anybody watching here for the very first time, my flower pots right into the page anonymously. I open up my little phone, I read whatever the message is, no idea what I'm going to read until I read it because it's anonymous and I don't look at them beforehand and all my advice is off the cuff. Can I just say I have seen that my gorgeous next door neighbour, Roy next door is watching, so hello neighbour, hello Roy, are you alright flower? <laughs> wonder if you can hear me through, whoa. So, yeah, a lot of love for Roy next door a couple of weeks ago and he didn't even bloody watch it. So, any Roy fans in the house tonight, he's actually watching. Drop him a comment. So, what a day it's been. What an actual day it's been. Your Auntie Nelly's quite exhausted. So, um, I'm expecting a bit of audience participation tonight. So, I may have to help you. Ask you to help me give some advice because I'm a bit fucked. <laughs> Top and bottom of it is. But I can see there's lots of people watching. And it is Wednesday. And have you heard the exciting news? Your Auntie Nelly has signed up for Panto again. And she's playing Mrs. Polly Flower Pots in Beauty and the Beast. So Mrs. Pots in Beauty and the Beast. Tell us all this time. So there we go. Yeah, practicing my song. That probably didn't even go with the music. But there we go. Tickets are already on sale for Bolton Panto. If we come out of lockdown on the 2nd of December, Panto will proceed. Oh, yes, it will. If we stay in lockdown, Panto will not proceed. So, fingers crossed, eh? And I will announce it all on the page as and when. So, yeah, one or two watching, isn't there? One or two watching. A very good morning to you. A very good afternoon and a very good evening. So, shall we just fucking get on with the show? I think we should. I think we should. So, let's start. As I said, all the messages that get sent in are completely anonymous. So, don't be worried about having your name read out or your age or your location. And please keep writing into the page because without your dear Auntie Nellie's, then there is no show. Yes, thank you very much. I played the evil stepmother last year in Cinderella. And this year, that's the last year I was a baddie. This year, I'm a goodie. Oh, yes, I am. I am a goodie. Dear Auntie Nelly, I have been on three dates with a man. Oh. <laughs> but last weekend, we were kissing on the sofa. And he was quite sexy and got turned on. Oh. He was playing with my breasts and kissing my nipples. Oh, now then. He got himself very turned on. He was moving his hips backwards and forwards, but I struggled to feel his erection through his jeans. I then decided that the only way to feel this was to put my hands down the front of his trousers. When I did this, I got the shock of my life. He's a six. He's a tall bloke. He's six foot, but his feet. But his. <laughs> But his penis was so thin, it dried me up. Oh, heck. I didn't actually get it out, but I've never felt anything like it before. I have to say, it was as thin as a mascara. What should I do? He's a lovely guy, but he's not that funny. But he seems genuine. Crikey. Anonymous flower potty has been on a few dates with a right nice man. He's not that funny, but he seems all right. But he's got a fucking pencil dick, hasn't he? Fuck me, pink. I mean, I've never... I have once, right, I have once got one out and it were little, like, really, really little. Like, really, 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 really little. Um, but it was still quite fattish, but it were little. Um, I didn't do much with it. I just made me excuses and left. 
<clears throat> um, right, what do we do, ladies? What do we do here, girls and boys? Please help in the comments. It's lovely, lovely. And all of a sudden, Pot's been on a date. She can't feel an hard on. Put her hands down there and thought, fuck me, pink. <clears throat> Got a bit of a pencil dick here. I know it's the fashion. I know it's the fashion to sort of take the piss out of each other's genitalia. And I know men worry a lot about the size of the, the penis, including the girth. So did he have a long penis and a very, very, very skinny girth? Or was it just tiny and very skinny? I mean, what was it like when you say it was like a mascara wand? I mean, surely it was like a barocca, a tube of barocca, or even... Was it, it might not even be in a, a tube of Barocca, a tube of Barocca's. I mean, was it? I'd say that, that's quite pencil dickish, isn't it? And you've also said that he's not actually that funny. I mean, what has he actually got going for himself? If he's got a pencil dick, he's not really that funny. I won't even bother. I won't bother getting another day. I won't bother getting not so far with him again. And I won't bother putting my hands down uh, his pants. And I certainly won't fucking unzip his pants and get his fucking pencil dick out. Because believe me, you don't want to see that. You'd be quite fucking traumatised by it. You'd be traumatised by it. And the thing is as well, if you haven't really set off in your relationship... Is there, is there any point? Because, I mean, you can't even do sexting and you can't do dirty talk. I mean, when you lay there in bedroom and you're like, I want to feel your hard, big cock inside me, you can't really say that to him because you'd be lying telling. And number two, it's not all about the size of the cock, is it, ladies? And all oh, there's loads of people shouting now going, well, you can go and summers and get loads of stuff for penetration and he's probably got really good fingers and a good tongue. I like a big, fat fucking cock. I like to feel fulfilled. So that's, you're asking me for my advice. What would I do? There is no way on God's green fucking earth that I'd want a fucking pencil dick. I'm sorry. Not that I've got a big baggy vagina and I need it fucking massive. Like a traffic cone. I'm just saying I like to feel fulfilled. There's got to be a bit of friction there, aren't there? I mean, all right, the pleasure point of a woman's vagina is usually just on the inside and especially on the outside. So does it matter? Yes, it fucking matters. I like big fat cock end off and if he's not bringing that to the table and he's not even bringing fucking comedy what the fuck's he even bringing to me nah sling him out flower he's not for you check the comments here i'm sure there's lots of lovely ladies who are not as brutal as your auntie nelly but then again i am known for being brutally honest pencil dicks for me are not the way forward i just i just wouldn't be able to do anything with it i'm sorry um no Sorry, not for me. So I hope that answers your little night time with Nelly question. Moving on. Oh. <clears throat> oh, a pencil. Can you imagine a fucking pencil dick? I mean, what the fuck are you supposed to do with that? A right thin dick. Right thin. Like a fucking little telescope. Not for me. Dear Auntie Nelly, my husband wants to buy me a sexy schoolgirl outfit. Oh, no then. He's asked me to put my hair in pigtails. He wants me, he wants to be the teacher in detention and wants me to role play. And he says it will spice up our sex life. Oh, I on the other hand think, why a schoolgirl of all things? I said I'd come, oh, excuse me, I've had a burp. I've just had um, a big gulp of Cork Zero before we went live. <clears throat> I said I would compromise and be a sexy nurse. But he said, no, he wants me to be a naughty schoolgirl. But you said, me, I, oh, I get brought into fucking everything, me. But you said, if it ever involves children or animals, then it's a no. I did say that, but let's just carry on a minute. I told him that. Oh, God, so she said, no, I can't dress up as a sexy schoolgirl because Auntie Nelly says we're not allowed to involve children. <clears throat> Once again, any advice I give on any of my Agony Aunt shows are purely for entertainment purposes. Anyway, he said, you don't know what you're talking about, Auntie Nelly. Which has alarmed me. It's fucking alarmed me as well, because does he even know me? No, does he watch my shows? I know a lot. I know that I don't want a fucking pencil dick. We've decided that. What should I do? I mean, my hair isn't really long enough for pigtails. Right. Let's go back to the beginning. When I say do not involve children or animals, I mean children 
anybody under the age of 16. Any animal, regardless of age. Your husband's asking to do a little bit of role play to spice up your sex life. And you can buy sexy school uniform outfits for grown ladies. He's not asking you to be four year old, is he? And pretend that you don't know your dimes tables. He's wanting you to be a sexy schoolgirl. Put your hair in pigtails, tell him that you're in detention. Oh, sir, um, I've been sent to detention for being naughty. A bit of role play and he's going to say, why have you been naughty? And you're going to be like swinging your pigtails. I mean, I, I wouldn't suit pigtails. You want to see me fucking panto outfit. But I've, I've been really naughty, sir, and I've been sent to your room. Um, Miss says I've got to come and see him in detention. What is sexy about that? I have no idea. But... If you really can't get your head around the fact that your husband wants you to dress up, because that's all it is, it's still you, you're not bringing kids in the bedroom because that's illegal and you'd go to prison, and rightly fucking so, you, you know, if you're not looking to role play and it's the schoolgirl thing and you've compromised and said, can I be a nurse? Just tell him, just say, look, I don't want to be a schoolgirl. I'll role play, I'll dress up for you, but I don't want to be a schoolgirl. It doesn't sit right with me. Can we do something else? Rather than a downright, no, I'm not doing that, which means not interested in our sex life, don't want to spice it up, not interested. So you're immediately deflecting anything is coming towards you with. So, you know, it's once again communication, isn't it? It's communication. There's lots of different other role play things that you can do that doesn't involve being a schoolgirl. Okay, you could be a sexy nurse. He could come in one day from work, say that, like, you've got in early. Hang on. I've had anchovies on my tea. I'm a bit thirsty. And, like, you could have, like, a sexy um, maid's outfit on. You can get loads online. And um, he could come in and say, what are you doing, love? And say, oh, I'm still cleaning. I've had such a busy day cleaning. And you could be, like, bent over, over in stirs in your little sexy maid's outfit. So rather than actually pandering and feeling uncomfortable to exactly what he desires, then, yeah, please try and meet in the middle and do something you do feel comfortable with. Hmm? Yeah? And if he looks at you in disgust and says, I told you it were a schoolgirl I wanted, fucking spray me spray me face with Mr Sheen. Other um, furniture polishes are available. Moving on. Oh, and by the way, if your hair isn't long enough for pigtails, you could. You could buy a wig. Sell them at Amazon. Dear Auntie Nelly, my husband... No, my boyfriend. Oh, God almighty, I've gone all cross-eyed. Dear Auntie Nelly, when my boyfriend is having sex with me, he is doing this new thing which really unnerves me. Ha! <laughs> I'm not even going to read anymore, but that's quite funny, isn't it, in itself? They're having sex and they're being a bit unnerved. <laughs> right. He's doing this new thing which really unnerves me. He has started staring at me. Oh. He thinks it's a lustful look. But I actually think it's quite terrifying. He says I need to make the effort and stare back. But I don't want to as it's such a turn off having him stare at me. I don't have much self-confidence to be honest. Is this the problem? I mean, I don't know what you mean by he's got like, he's like started staring at you. In what kind of way? In a passionate way? In a lustful way? In a loving way? Is he just looking at you because he enjoys looking at you during the act of lovemaking? Or is he actually, because that is quite terrifying and I wouldn't actually think that were quite sexy. If anything, that would make my vagina dry up, clamp up. <laughs> we probably need a trip to A&E to get him out. Um, yeah, so what kind of stare is this? And sometimes when things happen in the bedroom, new things, things we're not quite sure of and we've let go, communicate and ask him, so what are you doing with this stirring thing? What's going on? I'm not quite sure. Why are you staring at me like that? And why do you want me to stare back at you? What's it, you know, what do you, well, I love staring at you when I'm making love to you because I love watching you. And, you know, if you've got a reason as to why he's doing this, maybe you can get it round your head a little bit better. But, um, yeah, I don't think that is um, attractive. Unless, unless, you know, maybe 
you know, to get you used to the idea, maybe you should take your dog in one night. And then lots of people can stare at you <laughs> in a terrifying way. But yeah, I think staring at each other whilst having sex, I think it's quite exhausting and it would quite hurt your eyes. I mean, are you even allowed to blink? <laughs> are you allowed to blink? I mean, I don't even think that I have my eyes open during the act of sex. I am sure that during the whole act of sex, I am probably in the dark. I think I probably have my eyes shut throughout the whole of the sex. I think I do. I'm just trying to think now. Do I even have my eyes open? Would I even be able to fucking stir? I mean, I wouldn't open my eyes if I'm sucking his cock because chances are he'll probably shoot it in my eye and then I'd end up with red eye, pink eye. And that's not attractive for anybody. <laughs> Everybody knows what you've been up to. Um, I think I keep my eyes closed during the whole of sex. In fact, when I finish this live, I shall ask the last person I had intercourse with and say... When you were staring at me during sex, did I also have my eyes open or closed? I mean, and I think keeping them closed is probably best, really, especially if you need. And then it stops you from that heightened erotic feeling that occurs up your body and makes you do that. Because that can't be attractive either, can it? Moving on. <clears throat> my son started seeing a new girl, Auntie Nelly, which I find her to be really cheap. She's got really big lips and big boobs. Oh, my husband encourages him to have her around and encourages them upstairs. I know they have sex, as does my husband. When she leaves, that's the only time my husband wants sex with me, as he is obviously turned on by this girl and not me. He said it's just a coincidence, but he also finds excuses to be upstairs when they are upstairs. Am I overreacting? Well, I don't know if you're overreacting or not. I mean, you know, you've said to him, you only want to fuck me after she's fucking been round me a big lips and a big fucking tits wrapped round me fucking son's cock. What's going on? And he said, don't be so stupid, Sheila. That's just a coincidence. How are you actually overreacting? Is it a coincidence? Is it happening each and every time? Why is he upstairs? When they've gone upstairs, why is he following them up? Is he fucking joining in? Is he listening at the door? Has he got a little fucking gl glory all going on in the bathroom to your son's bedroom? What the fuck's going on? Why is he upstairs? Follow him upstairs. Put him a little bit out of his comfort zone. Maybe the next time the girl with the big lips and the big tits comes round and she goes upstairs and fucks your son and then fucks off, maybe when he gets a little bit amorous in the bedroom, tell him you're tired, you've got an headache. Tell him you're on your period. Tell him your vagina's really dry from your menopausal moments. Tell him something that obviously then makes him think, no, not tonight, not tonight, Josephine. And also, don't just tell him that, just say, listen, flower, I have told you once and I've told you again now, I ain't fucking you once your son's girlfriend's been round fucking him and you've been upstairs having a sneaky wank, listening to that, got yourself all turned on and think you can fucking dump and chuck inside me. Fuck off. It's not happening. Just be straight like that because I think there's too much fucking fannying around and flowering things up this day and age. Just come out with it like that and see what he says, you know. Or maybe, maybe... Why don't you try and uh, make the first move on a night when Big Lips, Big Tits has not been round and see what happens then? You know, if he hasn't actually had to go upstairs and do a lot of foreplay to get himself excited. Eh? Yeah. Because it sounds to me like he's getting all turned on with this girl and then he's climbing into bed beside you and doing a bit of fucking chuck, isn't he? Yeah. <sighs> not on my watch not on my watch dear auntie nelly i found a video on my partner's phone of him wanking his cock we have been in a relationship for just over six years and i'm not and it's not something we've ever done i don't believe he has ever watched porn <coughs> sorry i nearly choked <coughs> he's never watched porn ah but this video is all I think of now. Oh, why would he want... Oh, not in the way I'm thinking. I'm thinking of it in a different way, but she's obviously um, not deviant like me. Why would he want to film himself masturbating? I keep thinking maybe he did it to send it to someone else because he didn't send it to me. What do you think? But what I think is... It's very, 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 very highly unlikely that he has never, never 
watch porn. Highly unlikely. I could be wrong. There could be 1% of the male population, probably female population, out there that hasn't watched porn. Could be wrong. I could be fucking wrong. Don't think I am. Number two, he might not have been having a wank on his phone to send it to some fucking babe. Absolutely not. He might have just filmed it because he wanted to know what it looked like. I mean, have you never, ever filmed yourself fingering yourself? Just me then. Have you never actually taken a photo of yourself naked to see what you actually look like? Just me then. So the fact that he's got a video on his phone wanking doesn't really mean anything. Okay, so let's actually ignore that now and actually go back to what the fuck were you doing snooping on his fucking bastard phone? What were you doing? That's his phone. It's up to him. What do you have on his fucking phone? Fuck all to do with you. Get your fucking big nosy snout out of his fucking phone. If you think that maybe you sent it to someone else. Maybe you're thinking you don't trust him and you jump into fucking conclusions and jump your fucking R off every fucking trampoline out fucking block. What are you doing looking through his phone? The minute we look through somebody else's property, we have to accept that we may not be able to handle what we found. And it don't sound like you can. And it sounds to me like you live in a really pretty little ice with a white picket fence and thinks that your boyfriend has never had a fucking wank over porn. Get in the fucking real world. Hello, wake up. Congratulations, it's 2020. We've all had a bit of a shit year, but here we are. He doesn't watch porn. Fuck off. Pulling on my fucking piss flaps, you are. Once again, once we go through our partner's phones... You've got to sort of fucking suck it and see as to what you might find. Haven't you? Moving on. What do you think? What do I think? What do I think that he's never watched porn? Fuck you off. Some of these fucking commercials on telly. Some of these adverts are fucking soft porn. You only have to put fucking Nigella Lawson on. Fuck me. I sit there all fucking moist watching that come. And now I've never even eaten sushi off barbershop floor. Dear Auntie Nelly, <coughs> after 21 years of marriage, my husband wants to try anal sex, but I'm not too keen. I get lots of piles. I tried it, but it was so painful and all I could think of was, what if he touches a stool? So I couldn't relax and didn't enjoy it. He did though, and then he thanked me after. Oh, that's so sweet. So romantic to be thanked after. I spent all night on the toilet though with quite violent diarrhoea. My piles have worsened and I don't want to see my GP as I'm sure he will know what I have been up to. What should I do? P.S. Is he gay? I'm going to think that this anonymous lady is um, of an older generation because... Um, just because he has wanted to frequent anal sex with you for the first time after 21 years of marriage, regardless of your bottom raspberries, I think, you know, it's quite nice of him to ask. And the fact that you've also said, oh, go on then, I'll give it a go because, um, you know, I also want to spice up our 21 year of marriage. But it's ever so painful. I think it was probably ever so painful because you were so nervous and you wasn't relaxed because you were frightened he was going to fuck a stool. My darling girl, let me tell you, anybody who enjoys a little bit of anal play does not mean to say they are of the gay variety. Do you know that anal sex is frequented much more within the heterosexual relationships than it is within the homosexual relationships? So a man wanting to fuck an arse does not make him gay. Auntie Nelly wanting to rim an arse does not make her a homosexual man called Alan from Bradford. So let's get that clear right now. All right, number one. Number two. I'm not quite sure whether the doctor, when you go and see him, would be able to tell that your raspberries on outside of your ass, as I call them, your bottom berries, your piles, would actually be 
more enlarged and swollen because your husband decided to slip his little chipolata up your back alley. I don't think it quite works like that, Susan. These names I'm using are um, just off the top of my head. I've no idea who this lady is. So do I think your husband is gay? No. Do I think that when people are anally fucking us, can they feel a stool? No. And number three, do I think your doctor will know that you are no longer an anal virgin because you're struggling with your piles? No. I hope that's helped you. Keep writing into the page because just when I think I've heard it all, you never fail to surprise me, do you? No. Dan Wilson says, is there Allens on, from, uh, any Allens from Bradford on here? Yeah, I mean, if that's the case, P.S. is it gay? I mean, anyone who's fucked an arse, fingered an arse, tongued an arse, I mean, we're all sat here as homosexual men, I would presume. Dear Auntie Nelly, I don't think my penis is going to stop growing. Oh, dear God, where's that other one gone who had a pencil tick? I'm 19 now, and I thought we stopped growing at 18, but my penis is just getting bigger and bigger. Is this normal? Question mark. It's ever so large... I feel like I have a third limb. If this continues, I'm going to have to have custom-made trousers. Okay. When will it stop growing? Men everywhere worry that their penis is smaller than it should be or that it won't satisfy a lover. I worry that mine is so big it will make run women run away. Help. Or men. Or men run away because we don't know. It could be men or women. Okay, so how big are we talking? How big are we talking? I mean, is it a 10-inch cock, 11-inch cock, 12-inch cock, 13-inch cock? Is it like a bottle of fucking Volvic? How big are we talking? When does the penis start growing? Usually within puberty. When does it stop growing? I don't fucking know when it stops fucking growing. When it stops growing. If you're really that fucking concerned about the size of your penis, then go and see a general practitioner because a general practitioner, I am not. Any advice I give on this live show is purely for entertainment purposes. I have a feeling that you probably wrote into the page for entertainment purposes because I doubt, correct me if I'm wrong, flower pots, I doubt there are very many men who would actually be sat there worried that the penis will not stop growing. I doubt that very much. I think men would be absolutely fucking delighted with the fact that they had a bottle of Volvic between the legs. And I'm also thinking as we go back to the beginning of the show where your Auntie Nelly said that she likes to be extremely fulfilled, pleasured by something like a traffic cone, then please write into the page next time with your mobile number. <laughs> and I'll either pass it on after I've finished with you or keep you to myself forever. How's that? So when does a man's penis stop growing? No fucking idea. When does it start growing? In puberty. Will it ever stop growing? Of course it'll stop growing. But do you know what doesn't stop growing even after you're dead? Your nose. Your nose. I've just seen my gorgeous daughter here, Stephen Sullivan. Good evening, darling. Um, your nose carries on growing even after you're dead. Did you know that? Hmm? True story, that. I know um, a funeral director who told me that. I promise that I will not have anchovies again on a Wednesday before I come live. Anyway, moving on. Oh, I'm going to make all the women run away because of the size of my penis. I'd be like, ah, come here, young man, young man, come this way. Dear Auntie Nelly, I wrote into your show a while back and require further advice. Oh, I found somebody new and things seem to be going well until he asked me how many people, how many people, how many people. He asked me how many people I've been with sexually. I told him the truth that I have had sex with around 50 people. The 50 people have been mostly one night stands and some I have had relationships with. I thought it was best to be honest. I don't see why I should have to hide it. He said to me that that is very off-putting and that I am a slag because I am only 24 and slept with 50 people. And I have had chlamydia once in the past. Do you think in future I should be so honest with a partner about how many people I've slept with? Do you think I am a slag? And should people 
I've slept with asked such a question. I don't feel ashamed of my behaviour as I enjoy sex. Please help because the truth isn't on my side here. Okay, so let's not worry about the fact that he sort of like is into name calling because I don't really like the name Slag, okay? So nobody's a slag, that's fine. As long as it was all consensual and you were having fun at the time, doesn't matter how many. Doesn't matter the fact that you slept with 50 men and you're only 24. Doesn't matter. Should we hold back certain things when we're with a new par partner? Should we actually be so honest? And I actually think, wow, you've been so honest and that's lovely of you because you're obviously a very truthful person. There are certain questions that we're asked as ladies and we don't actually tell the truth. So what I will say is if somebody says they slept with three people, I would time that by seven. So if you said to your auntie Nelly, so how many men have you slept with? And I said three, the real answer would probably be 21. Okay, what's happened has happened. It's in the past and it's nobody's fucking business. Whether you slept with 50 men or 150 men, it doesn't matter, does it? It don't matter. doesn't matter. And if he is sort of asking you about your past, then he's certainly not concentrating on a future with you because what's past is past and it's fuck all to do with him. Think himself lucky that you answered him. But when we're so new into a relationship, you know, just be a little bit more reserved with the truth because it shouldn't really matter, okay? That's all I'm going to say there. But fuck me, Pink, 24 and 50. Whew, that's some going, that flower. You fucking beat your Auntie Nelly at 24. I don't think I'd had 50 at 24. I think I might have had like 45, but I don't think I'd had 50. Good on you. Crack on. As long as it's consensual and it's all protected. Oh, this is the last dear Auntie Nelly of the evening. Dear Auntie Nelly, I have a boyfriend. But I don't know if he really is my boyfriend. Oh, is it a surprise? I've got loads of surprise boyfriends, me. I've just not wanted to break the surprise to them yet and upset them while they go around the merry little way. So, he only ever texts me for sex. I get messages from him saying, do you fancy it? And because I really fancy him, I say yes. So he comes around and I have sex with him. He always makes an excuse after and says he's got to go. I haven't even spent the night with him yet. And we've been together for nearly five months. I see him every now and again, but usually every five days. Then it's just the same text. How can I make him more committed? The thing is, you can't because you've sort of jumped into a friend with benefits there, haven't you? Because he doesn't even um, message you to say, hi, how are you doing? How's your day going? Good morning, good evening. What are you, what are you up to? What are you am for your tea? Because that's the message I sent everybody. What are you am for your tea? My life revolves around messaging people and asking them what they've had for the tea. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> needless to say, this bed hasn't seen a lot of action, really, because rather than saying, hi, do you fancy coming round? I'm saying, hi, yeah, what have you had for your tea? Moving on to the actual problem. The problem is here that, you know, you're sleeping with this man once a week or whatever it may be, and you've got a little bit of feelings. You've caught a bit of feelings, and that's okay because you're an emotional human being, and that's what can happen. What we haven't done here is when we're jumping into just a sexual relationship with somebody, it's still okay to communicate with that person and it's still okay to lay down your boundaries of what you expect from this, okay? And I don't think you've had that conversation. So you're obviously wanting a little bit more. And when you're wanting something, it means that you're lacking something. So even though you're having this fantastic sex life with this person that you really fancy once a week, you're still in want of something and you're wanting something because you're lacking something. So I think you're actually wanting the relationship side to just the physical side. So you're wanting your emotional needs met and he's not doing that for you. So what you're actually thinking here is if he can't meet your emotional needs as well as your physical needs, there's plenty of people out there who would be FWBs with, friends with benefits, who would possibly be able to still meet too without a big commitment. So that's what you've got to think really. Is he really that fit? Because even when they are really that fucking fit, once you've fucked them, you've fucked them, haven't you? There's nothing else to really 
treasure about him. Do you know what I mean? So how do you make him commit? You can't, but you can certainly have the conversation next time as to where your boundaries lay. And if he can't emotionally give you something, and all he can do is give you something physical, then I think it's time to stop it because the only person who's going to get hurt here is you and nobody else. So, flower pots, that's been your dear Auntie Nellies of the evening, your night time with Nellies, which is over 18s, talk of a sexual nature and strong language throughout. And any advice I did give was purely for entertainment purposes. Did you enjoy it as much as I did? Because I certainly did. I'm going to go for a big long piss now and I'm going to go and get some more Volvic and I won't be having anchovies for my tea again. Keep writing into page the dear Auntie Nellis. Keep writing in for Nighttime and Nelly and Sunday service. And please keep watching the page as soon as I release the Beauty and the Beast Panto ticket information. So fingers crossed that lockdown is lifted on the 2nd of December. And then hopefully as lot many of you can come and see me play Mrs. Polly flower pots in this year's production of Beauty and the Beast and the gorgeous Stephen Sullivan who was watching, he may still be, is playing the frightful Gaston. So good night and God bless and I'll see you all very, very soon. Mwah.